Today is Equal Pay Day, the day in 2022 that it takes for women to make the same dollar amount that men earned in 2021. That's roughly an extra two and a half months of work for women. Women working full time in 2020 made 83 cents for every dollar paid to a man. The numbers are worse for many women of color. Black women made only 64 cents on the dollar. Latinas and Native American women made 57 cents. The losses over a 40-year career are astronomical, with Latinas and Native American women losing more than $1 million. Black women lose just under a million, and white women lose a little more than $500,000. Joining us now is CBS News reporter Sarah Ewald Weiss. Sarah, thanks so much. It's great to see you. You have been reporting on this wage gap for Equal Pay Day. So... We know the pandemic made this problem even worse for women. So many women left their careers because of child care issues. Tell us some of the, the, the hits that women have taken during COVID. Hi, Meg. Yeah, we've definitely reported on this. You've reported on it. I've reported on it. Millions of women left the workforce in 2020. Right now, we are still down more than a million women uh, in the workforce participation two years after the pandemic began. So these are women who've taken a huge gap in their careers, uh, whether it's to deal with children or to deal with taking care of parents for other reasons related to this pandemic. Uh, what we've seen is the gender pay gap this year, 83 cents on the dollar, as you've mentioned. Uh, that actually is a smaller uh, gap than it was previously. It used to be 82 cents on the dollar. So you would think that's good news. Uh, the problem is, is that's not actually the case. When women were leaving the work Force because of the pandemic, a lot of the women who were hit the hardest were low-wage women. Uh, so when those women left the workforce, it looked like wages across the board went up because people who were more insulated from the pandemic and kept their jobs uh, were people who were making higher wages. So now it looks like it shrank, but economists are concerned as women return to the workforce moving forward, it'll actually be a larger gap than it previously was, uh, something that keep in mind as women were leaving jobs and taking this time time off, uh, it's going to be a challenge to come back to work at the same mm. level of income uh, as they previously had. Uh, it looks like a career, a career gap here where they're taking care of people uh, and working from home, doing all these other things. Uh, so that is something they need to make sure people are coming back at the same wages as when they left uh, and not taking hits because of the pandemic. And it'll take some time for us really to get the data to see where this actually stands. All right, let's, let's consider a couple of sets of numbers here. So from 1979, to 1994, the wage gap seemed to be shrinking. But in the last three decades, it's barely moved, even though a lot's changed in the workforce. You can see the trajectory of, of how it plateaued. So, Sarah, let me ask you this. What's being done at the federal and the local levels to deal with this issue? Yeah, you know, it has been about the same around the 22, 23 percent uh, since about 30 years now, really. Uh, and it has had some momentum at different levels. Uh, in terms of the federal government, uh, the Equal Pay Act was passed in 1963, signed by President Kennedy. Uh, since then, uh, there has been a number of pieces of legislation that have been advocated for uh, the Paycheck Fairness Act is one piece of legislation uh, that Democrats in Congress are still pushing for at this time. Uh, there has been some struggles. What we have seen is there have been a different set of uh, policies that have been put at the state level. There's been more momentum state by state in terms of what's happening and at the local level. Some of the things we've seen is more transparency in pay. Uh, when you have rules about transparency, you can compare different wages for different workers, men and women. Uh, that allows for a bigger conversation about the gap when you can compare that. Uh, there's other things about uh, making sure that there are access to unions. What we know is women who are in unions make more money than women who are not in unions. Uh, that collective bargaining power is something that helps women. Uh, it, it's shown in terms of equal pay. Uh, so that is another thing that we're seeing people advocate for the Biden administration at the federal level, some member, members of Congress. Uh, there has been legislation that's been held up in Congress, but that's another uh, way to help close the pay gap. Uh, and we've seen it at a more local level as well. Another thing to keep in mind here is while we talk about states doing uh, things to help close the pay gap, the federal government advocating for closing the pay gap, uh, something to keep in mind is more employers are also talking about this. Uh, there's been an uptick in the conversation about it. I think that is one thing that really, at the most 
basic level, uh, when employers are having the conversation and doing pay audits, uh, that is something that we've seen increases of. Uh, then it also can help lead towards more equal pay across the board. Sarah, ultimately, this leads us to the wealth gap, something that Jim already mentioned. White women have 32 cents to a man's dollar, and black and Latino women have pennies compared to white men. Tell us more about how this impacts women's finances long term. Yes, this has a huge long-term impact. Uh, you mentioned the pay gap. That's just part of the wealth gap. And you mentioned that the pay gap for black women over a 40-year career uh, amounts to just under a million dollars for Latina women and Native American women. That amounts to more than a million dollar. Uh, but there are other factors at play here in terms of the wealth gap. Uh, we know that women and people of color are paying higher interest rates. Uh, we also know that women are investing less than men um, and have been investing less than men for a longer period of time. Uh, other things that are part of this is more women are taking time out of their careers uh, when they go on maternity leave, for one, uh, paid maternity leave is not something we have at a federal level, so it really depends on the state. That adds to women earning less money over their overall career. It helps with widening this overall wealth gap. Uh, so there are a multiple faceted uh, problem here that we're seeing. It's a little harder to decipher the wealth gap than the wage gap because marriage is a part of this, and then it becomes a question of, well, what is wealth in a married couple versus single people? But we do see it uh, very prevalent among single women versus single men. Uh, I do want to say there is some good news here. Uh, we know that women are investing more than ever before. Uh, there used to be less than 50 percent. Uh, we've seen a survey from Fidelity that's up above about 66 percent of women now investing outside of retirement. Uh, so that is good news uh, overall, but they still have a long way to go, uh, and it is something to keep in mind as we move forward, uh, as women need to save more money than men, because women, un unfortunately, Jim, live longer than men, so they need to save more of their careers for retirement. All right. Well, at least we're ending on, on a high note there, Sarah <laughs> well, Ewald. I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I mean, a little bit there. Thanks for all your reporting on this.